What's up, people? Welcome to this episode of the By the Hood podcast or webcast because I don't know how you're consuming this content. I'm your host as always. My name is Jimmy. And as we start off every show, that's with gratitude. Just want to say thank you to all of our supporters, all of the students at By the Hood University, um, anyone who's bought merch, who shared our videos. We want to say we appreciate all the support. We really do. Um, and if you're watching this video, do me a favor. Make sure that you hit the like button. Make sure that you subscribe because that helps us out. It helps us fight the algos. And we know we get, we're in a constant fight with the algos. If you're listening to this audio, make sure you subscribe to whatever uh, audio podcast platform you're listening to, whether it's Spotify, Apple, Google Play, whatever it may be. Um, just make sure that you subscribe and uh, share this content as well. Uh, I got my brother Corey back in the building. Corey, what's up, good brother? Man, you know, I'm living La Vida Luca, man. Every day above ground is a good day. No complaints, man. man no I, complaints see, at all. I see you spreading that message, man, that, that, that buy your future income, buy future income t shirt. Yeah. yeah that's, that's one of our pieces of merch, man. Buy future income, because that's what we try to wow. teach the folks how to buy future income. Um, but for those who may be listening for the first time, our platform is designed to highlight brothers and sisters who look just like us who are building businesses and doing amazing work in the community and let them tell their story and just have a free flowing conversation with them. So we all can learn about what they have going on and maybe we could pick up a gem that'll help us improve our lives. And this episode is no different, man. We have a brother um, who actually owns a beauty supply store, which is, is, is something we want to actually talk about. That's amazing because we need more of us to own those kind of stores in our communities, but he's also very active in the community um, and, he, and he builds for his people, man. So without further ado, I want to introduce the good brother, Demetrius, man. Demetrius Chambly. What's going on, brother? How are you? Definitely, definitely. I'm doing well, man. Thanks for you guys for bringing me on and uh, sharing the platform for the space. Thank you for creating it. A lot of times we ask, you know, you know, what's the solutions? What do we need to do? This is part of the solution right here, creating the platform in order to have a media space to reach our people. Yeah, man, it, it definitely is. And um, it's also good for us just to have these conversations. Like I said, uh, one of the one of the um the cheat codes about the, the podcast for me is like uh meeting brothers and sisters who are doing great work, but also learning from them myself. So I'm pretty sure that's this is gonna be no exception because um you're in a space that I've always found interesting and um always wondered why more of us are not in it, and then you read the stories about why we're not in it in terms of supply chain and things like that. So I definitely want to talk to you about um, how you got into the beauty supply business. But before we do that, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Where are you from? Um, you know, what's your upbringing like? Okay, so I'm from Hartford, Connecticut, uh, born and raised my whole life. I grew up with my grandparents, uh, grandmother, grandfather, and I went to school, uh, Annie Fisher. Then I went to a Fox um, Middle School. Then I went to Sports uh, Science Academy. Uh, one of the things that I talk about a lot is how important parenting is and us uh, just being very involved in your children's life, uh, education, history and everything. Uh, one thing I want to highlight is that growing up with my grandfather was tremendous for me when it came to the growth of, um, you know, that rites of passage of uh, me growing up to be a man. But I actually uh, what's unique is that I actually went through a difficult time because I lost my grandfather sort of in my um, uh, middle school, elementary uh, years. And as I lost my grandfather, I actually uh, took a left turn. And that's when I got involved into some things, you know, and it, it's the sort of it's sad to say, but like the regular story, just veering off and, you know, dropped out of high school, um, you know, uh, went to uh, uh, got incarcerated for a little while. And then and then now we have hair. So we're going to talk about it a lot today. But just to start off, just the history, you know, coming from that, you know, you can come back from 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 anything. But Hartford, Connecticut, it's, it's a spot where, you know, we got a lot of uh, black people within our space. And you got a lot of people who are actually trying to do things with inside of the community and work together with each other. Yeah, that's dope. Mm -hmm. that's dope that you have, um, you know, a lot of people out there trying to make things happen. Um, and you talked about the importance of your grandparents. So that's 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 a uh, that's interesting because we all go through things, but it's how you bounce back, right? Mm -hmm. So so and and going through those things and, and and coming out, how did you actually get into the space you're in now with the beauty supply shop? How did that come about, and what made you want to actually get in that space? Okay, so. Throughout um, my childhood, I grew up with my grandmother, as I said, and she was um, a hairdresser. And my sisters, they were hairdressers. They did hair. My mom did hairdressing as well. And 
luckily enough, I married a hairdresser. <laughs> so she, she did hair, but I don't think that was so, love. Say that again. I don't think that was love. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's amazing yeah. how that happens, right? Like I see a lot of times where you know, um, you know, a folks, a folks, you know, father does one thing, and then the daughter ends up marrying someone just like her father, and vice versa. So yes. it happens often. So you come yeah. from a family of hairdressers, and you married a hairdresser. How about that? And, and and I married a hairdresser, and and she's phenomenal. Shout out to uh, my wife. Team, you know, having a great team around you is important, and it starts at home. So when you have a great partner, a great wife, um, I mean, it does tremendous uh, for the for you, for the community, and everything. So we we started the beauty supply store because I I went to school and I've always been interested into finances. Even when I was uh, small, my father used to say he used to give me certain uh, allowances, and he said he would see out of my sisters and brothers who would have the most saved and within the next week. And I would always be the one that would have the most saved. And I was just always like that as a kid. I'm sort of, I don't know if you want to say weird, but I'm sort of the guy who's like, I love to budget. I love uh, checking my bank account, checking my credit score. Shout out to the uh, 800 credit score club that, uh, that we in. Um, so I've always been interested in the finances. And then I went to school for business and I've been an avid reader. So one of the things we wanted to do when I was researching and creating the uh, business plan is I wanted to see strategic wise, what are our people dominating when it comes to being a consumer, but we don't dominate when it comes to being ownership. And beauty supply store, that was one of the main things that just kept coming up, kept coming up. And when it came to finances, I was pretty good at. And as I said, my wife, she's a licensed cosmetologist, but also she was a teacher for several years as well. So she had the background and it just made a, a beautiful bond. And it was like the right time to just open up the business. And it's been it's, it's been phenomenal. You have challenges because we don't dominate in ownership. But I always say you're going to have challenges in whatever you do. Figure it out. There's not a time to have excuses or anything like that. That's 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 over. We have access to so many information, so much information, and then also being able to build a network with people. So that's how we got into the beauty supply uh, business. It was very strategically done. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Um, first off, what's the name of your store so we can uh, actually put that out there as well? Okay, so the store name is Madam's Beauty Supply. We're in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, 1390 Park Street, um, 06106. And do you guys do any e-commerce as well in terms of like, um, you know, selling things online from, from the shop? Or is that something you're getting into or are you already into it? We, we do sell, we don't sell online, but what we do is we do allow customers to call because we have supporters you know, down in South Carolina, uh, North Carolina, Georgia, that just want to support us personally. But honestly, when it comes to us operating as a group, I always use the method of trying to find a black owned beauty supply store that's near you to support. Okay. You know? and, and and that's that's the method that I use. If it's somebody like family who personally wants to support us, then we're all for that. But I try to direct them to a black owned beauty supply store that's nearest them and go ahead and support them and build that relationship with that business owner. I think that's amazing. Um, because that right there shows that uh you have the abundance mindset because you're willing to send business to another business owner. And mm -hmm. I think uh, in the long run, that's going to benefit you. Um, I guess, yeah, the only issue with that is it's not too many are black <laughs> 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 end up bouncing back to you. Yeah, it's not, it's not they don't got nobody near them. Right. Um, and that's the question I wanted to get into, right? So, and again, I don't have any experience at all in this space, but I, you know, I read online and I know that uh, several folks had to shut down shop because of their suppliers, right? So we don't own the supply chain. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we have issues in terms of what we were able to pay for certain products to get into our store to sell at retail. Um, how has that been for you, uh, just getting supplies and things of that nature? What's that struggle like? Um, it's it's a it's a struggle. It well, it's more of a struggle in the beginning, but you have to do your research. Um, as I stated in the beginning, I'm an avid reader. Uh, one of the books right here, uh, the E Myth Revisited: Why Small Businesses Fail. 
and they don't work and what we need to do about it. I learned a lot uh, within that book and creating a system, but also networking. Like I said, any goal that you have, it's going to be tough, especially us uh, within our demographic. It's going to be tough to do things, as they say, you know, when 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 whites catch a cold, you know, we catch pneumonia. So that's the same thing when it comes into business. It's tough to go into this business, but there is a way in order to figure out something. And it's up to you to be able to find out that way. And it's on us, our generation, to be able to find out that sort of that lane to make it easier for our next generation. So how we did that was we communicated with other business owners, black business owners who was already established. And I was able to coordinate with a lady who's down south. I think she's in Carolina, South Carolina. And she was very open to sharing her distributors with me. She was very open to let me know different tips, different strategies. And I also was recommended to a black uh, business group, uh, beauty supply group that's online on Facebook. That was a great resource where we were able to find uh, black distributors to work with. You know, people complain about not having black distributors. Well, we do have some black distributors. You just don't know about it and we got to do the research. So that's why I'm here to be able to share that information. There was a um, and I'll once we show this online, I'll tag it down into the uh, comment section. But there are black groups who are working to open up more black beauty supply stores. And one of our distributors is a, a black guy named Patrick. He's down in Florida and we work with him to be able to get all of our hair products. So we have those sort of those lanes and those distributors. We have to just work work at it and, and network with different people who are already doing it. I say success leave clues. Go to the people who are already in business and try to extract that knowledge from them. Man, that's powerful right there because yeah. you know you're, you're doing for self, right? So you're figuring it out. Um, so now at this point, now that you're in the game, are you willing to mentor not others? Only, yeah, ho, ho, ho. Not only did he do for self, but he got everybody paid in the process, <laughs> right? So it wasn't like, all right, I did for myself and nobody else got anything out of it. He did right. for self and everybody else around him got paid in the process. And so he didn't just say, all right, give me this. And then nobody else got anything. He passed it forward. And so now everybody in that in that line and that succession gets get something from that. And that's dope as hell. And yeah. I think you you guys made me uh, actually think of a point right now. You know, I always try to get us back to going back to our culture. Our culture has never been about us succeeding individually. It's always been about the, the, the village. We got away from that because, of course, our culture was stripped from us. But that's our true nature. And you guys just actually made me think about it. I think I was so easily um, able to say, you know, support the black owned business or beauty supply store that's nearest to you is because when I went into business, I had a black lady who owned a, a beauty supply store who was open to helping me. So I want to be able to pay that forward. Okay. Oh, yeah, that, that was my question. So it, it, with, with that being said, are you willing to mentor others? So if someone reaches out to you and they're trying to get that done, you're willing to help them and give them the, you know, the information, so to speak. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. I always uh, extend the invitation for anybody to be able to contact me. If you want any uh, tips, if you want to just talk on the phone. I had um, some people where they wanted to open up a business and we sat on the phone and talked for hours and be able to just uh, talk about different distributors that they can actually go to talk about the numbers. Financing is the, is one of the biggest questions that actually that, that people have and they want to know about. So being able to to create that business plan, but as you create that business plan, you could be able to use me as a resource. And I'm willing. I talk to a couple of different people uh, in different states, but a lot of times it just kind of falls on deaf ears. You know, you got to be serious, and we we also have to be serious about not wasting uh, people's time because when you're actually doing this research, you're doing the work. You know, it takes a lot of energy. So if you're very serious and you want to do it, definitely uh, reach out to me and you can use me as a resource. Man, that's awesome. That's definitely awesome, man. So uh, my question is, um, moving forward, right? Uh, wh what is the plan for Matt? Like, are you trying to expand um, and, and get more uh, stores or, or what's the plan? It's funny. It's funny that you say that, right? Because I want to... I pull a, a quote from a book. Like I said, I'm, I love to read. And from this same, this same book right here, I just want to read a quote if it's all right with you guys. Absolutely. 
Um, the, the quote says, if your business depends on you, you don't own a business. You have a job. And that's what's that's what's going on right now. We we ask people, you know, why uh, uh, our businesses specifically seem to fail and everything. A lot of times when you go into a business, you're actually not walking into a business. You're actually walking into an establishment where somebody was probably so frustrated at their job. All they did was create a job for themselves. That's what you're walking into. And we actually haven't created a business. So you asked, what are the plans uh, going forward? What are the plans going forward? We want, we would like to honestly be able to scale. That's what we're looking at, but we're still solidifying ourselves. We're a pretty new business. We're still solidifying our structures, you know, our uh, protocol, our procedures, and you gotta have that correct before you're able to scale and to move up. But during that time, Far, as far as the future, I like I said, I would like to see other people open up black owned beauty supply stores within their cities, within their states. I look at that, like I said, I'm a community guy. I'm a group economics guy. So I look at that as a part of our success as well. Yeah. And and, and that's awesome because uh, the E-Myth is a great book. And we're going to get into the books in a little bit because I know you're a huge reader. But it also reminds me of the uh, cash flow quadrant. When you yes. talk about, you know, you know, the S quadrant and, and, and the B quadrant, the difference between the two. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's powerful because you already recognize that you're not where you need to be. You want to scale, but it's also not just about you. It's about community. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's that's really important. So let's let's jump into some of the work that you do in the community, because I, I see that you're, you know, you're, you're very um active in the community trying to help others. And you just mentioned how you try to help others in business. Um. Is that something that you've always had? Like, were you raised that way or is it something that you picked up along the way? What made you so community driven? Well, I think it's, it's, it's my personality. I've always been sort of had a personality of being a giver and, and, and I've always gave. And that can be, let's say, troubling as well, being a giver, because you tend to attract people who always want. And so you have to sort of keep this 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 balance. So I would say um, probably a, a few years ago, I had to actually change my circle of the people who I were I was around. I had so many people who were takers that was around me. They were uh, taking withdrawals out, but they wasn't depositing anything. So I had to create a balance uh, a balance level when it came to that. So I have a lot of things uh, going on. What drives me to give back to the community is is sort of our greats. Uh, Kwame Torre, um, you know, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, you know, some of the greats that we all read about, those people, you know, those, they drive me. Dr. Claude Anderson is somebody who actually changed my life. He's a mentor to me, not personally, but really personally through a book. And I think that's a way that you can actually gain mentors is through a book. And he actually taught me basically you know, you winning individually is nothing. I don't see me as having an 800 credit score or me being a homeowner or a business owner. Really, that's not a win for me. I'm not I'm, I'm not happy with that. I'm I'm happy when we are able to see more black owned business open up and we see the people who are our oppressor who has established businesses inside of our community shut down. That's a win for me. Yeah, same here. Dr. Claude Anderson is a huge inspiration. I mean, one of the reasons why we do what we do right here. Um, and, and that's powerful right there to, to, to talk about the fact that you can have mentors that you've never met through books. But the question I have is you said something very interesting about changing your circle. I want to talk mm -hmm. about that briefly. How difficult is that to do? Because a lot of times when you change your circle, you have to cut off people that are maybe family or close friends that you actually care about. But they're not like you said, they're not depositing. How difficult uh, of a transition was that for you? Yes, the, uh, the the old you and the new you can't exist at the same time. And I would say discipline is a key to any success and any goal uh, achieving that you want to do within your life. One of the things that I, I, I've been, I, I can say gifted at, but I also work uh, at it as well is discipline. And discipline is something that, is actually a, a tributor to my success. I'm the type of person that I'll do things like back in the month of September, I went like right before September, I said, you know what, I'm not gonna eat no meat for the month. So at a drop of a dime, I would say no meat because I feel like 
I'm obligated to do that because if me and you brother start something, I want you guys to be able to rely on my discipline. And if I can't count on you to be able to practice your discipline within a way, how can I be able to count on you when it's game time? So changing your circle is, is very important, is very vital, but it's difficult. Discipline, I would say my advice probably wouldn't be for everybody because I know many of us lack discipline. I was able to just say, look, I'm going to cut off these people. And if, if they're family members or whatever the case is, that's just how it got to be because I see a goal that I want to achieve for my family and my next generation that wasn't given to me. So whatever the casualties are, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be. Uh, but a lot of people can't do that. And, and, and I understand that. So if they can't, I would say do an 80-20 rule where, you know, 80%, you know, you're working on yourself and the things that you want to do. And then you leave a small portion to be able to deal with, you know, uh, sort of a different crowd who seem to be those takers or those family members that keep dragging their feet and things like that. Leave a leave a small amount of energy uh, to deal with those people as well. But me, I just, I just cut them off. I mean, I got to get my goals. We only got one life to live. Yeah, that's... that's that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, right that's actually, yeah it is. It is. Yeah, that's um, actually fine. So, so I, I, before you go to the next question, I wanted to, to ask him a question about that. So when you were cutting those people off and you were moving along, how did that did that affect your business in a negative way or did it actually boost your business? Um, and allow you to, to to make better decisions and move. Great, great question. Uh, as far as it affected my business, once again, discipline and doing the research, I was probably fortunate to read a ahead of time. So it prepared me um, also to have the, the platform in a circle, the right circle around me when I was going into business. So before I went into business, you know, I, I had already read the uh, the books of the things and the people that I needed to be around. So once I went into business, it was more like strategically wise, I said, you know what, our people spend the money with inside of this business sort of us being vocal about the things that are going on uh, that affects us as a black society, I can speak freely about anything that I want because my customers are 90, 95% black. So I can speak freely on anything that I want. My wife can speak freely on her platforms on, on anything uh, that she wants. So that kind of created the, uh, the, the access and the lanes for us to be able to open up a business and not have to worry about the people who we've we've cut off. Okay, that's dope. That's dope. Let me ask you this though: um, along your journey from where you started to where you are now, what has been like probably the biggest hurdle? Was it cutting folks off? Or what was the biggest um, hurdle that you had to overcome to get to where you are now as a businessman? Um, as a as a business, I would say sort of the biggest hurdle would probably be, probably be myself because with having sort of that 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 mamba mentality, you know, you want things to happen just like just so so quickly. Another thing too is I've mentioned about how discipline can be such a great attribute. Discipline has always ha has also pushed me into achieving my dreams maybe a little bit earlier than I should. So let's say for an example, I talked about, um, you know, I've read books, I've done studies. I was able to get my credit score to an 800 very quickly just off of discipline. Um, I read uh, Dave Ramsey, you know, I did the snowball effect and I was just basically knocking out all my debt in order to be debt free. So I paid off my uh, my student loans. I paid off my, um, you know, all the different credit card debts and everything like that. And then I had a, a Mustang at the time. Mustang, I was young. I had a Mustang with, with 20 inch rims, stripes and all of that stuff or whatever. But I'm a disciplined person. And I was able to say, you know what? I'm going to give up my car because I don't want a car loan anymore. So I actually had to give back the car and then pay two thousand dollars more in order to pay for the whole uh, the, the full uh, term of the loan. And then I was able to just actually, which is a whole nother thing. I actually started a moving company after I did that. But discipline, as you said, what was one of the hurdles? Discipline has also pushed me to be in the 800 club. 
But when you're part of the 800 Club, you get access to relationships and to people who are willing to give you funds, give you capital by honestly by the drop of a dime. So when you get there with that discipline, if you don't have sort of that 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 vision, that goal, and something that's actually going to uh, have a return on this, it's an investment, then you could actually get yourself into a lot of trouble. So I would say that's more of my biggest hurdle uh, in order to stay patient, learning that you know my discipline can be a good thing, but it also can be a, a, a negative thing as well if I'm not ready to receive those uh, those rewards. Like they said, to whom, to whom much is given, much is required. So I was given a lot through my own discipline, but it was required of me. And that's why I like to keep mentors around to kind of like keep me grounded, keep me uh, in check as well. Okay. Right. You just said a that's, word. That's a good answer yeah. right there. Um, we we talked a lot there. about <laughs> <laughs> we um we talked a lot about books throughout this episode, and you've mentioned a couple books and talked about how um important reading has been to you. So let's talk. Let's jump into some books. But before we jump into books, um, have you always been a reader? Is it something you picked up later in life, or um, what's your relationship like with books? How's that been throughout your? your oh journey? man, I, I I actually I hated reading. Like <laughs> I hated reading like growing up because you know what's funny is shout out to a guy named uh, Sean P. He actually just released uh, another one of his title books uh, called The Anatomy of a Book. And it just kind of resonated with me so well because I think reading was actually presented to us in a wrong way. I talk to people a lot about packaging. Your packaging has to be uh, very unique and very special. And reading growing up was just like, ah, you on punishment, go read a book. You know what I mean? You, that was more like the punishment type of thing. But reading wasn't presented to me in that it was, uh, as Sean P would say, it's fun. It's a fun, they call it fundamental, but it's a fun for the mental. And that's sort of a thing that wasn't introduced to me. I never knew that I can go into reading and actually like, I can go to Italy with my reading. I can go to Africa with my reading. I can go to different type of uh, places. You know, I can have different mentors uh, through reading. So those are the type of things that, um, you know, I wasn't introduced to. So what happened was when I was incarcerated, I had a gentleman who was an avid reader who was in there and he took me to the side and he, uh, we was actually listening to Lauren Hill and we was listening to Lauren Hill and she mentioned something about reciprocity. And when she mentioned that he stopped the music and as he stopped the music, he looked at me. He said, do you know what that mean? And I said, nah, I don't know what that mean. And he laid in on me. He laid in on me. Like, how could you be listening to music and you don't know what it means? He said, we're going to get you a library. We're going to get you a we're going to get you some books or whatever. And we're going to have you start to read. So from that day on, when I was sitting on the bus from that day on, uh, from that day, I started writing down a bunch of notes. When I came home, I had a thick packet of uh, notes written on indigent uh, uh, requests. Indigent means like you don't have any money. I have any money. So I actually flipped it on the backside and wrote <laughs> my notes and wrote my key words that I didn't understand. I wrote it on the back of there and I just just try to use those as I'm speaking. And I was able to, you know, just become a better reader through that. But I got to thank that brother because he sparked that and he's seen something in me that I actually didn't see in myself at a time where people are at their lowest. So I think that was a, a phenomenal uh, a, a way and aspect of reading. Yeah, uh, it sounds like um, uh, the Malcolm X story, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but what was that first book that you read where it changed and you recognized like, man, I can I can port myself here or there or this actually isn't bad. What was the first book that you read that uh, gave you that feeling when you recognize that this can actually be something that's pleasurable and also I can learn from this? Uh, As a man thinketh. Uh, I, that was one of my first books that I read as a man thinketh and just talking about, you know, be careful with your thoughts. Be careful with your thoughts. You know, whatever you're thinking, you know, that's what you're actually going to be. So that's when I just start putting the gate. We put locks on our doors, you know, but we don't put locks on our minds and what our eyes are seeing. And that's when I just started to realize I have to take control. And, and actually, um, it got me upset because I realized that I was just like a pawn. 
that was being used. You know, all, all, all the things that they talk about black men, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be a high school dropout. Okay. I did that. You know, you're going to be a, a, a baby daddy. I was on the road to doing that. You're going to be incarcerated. I had started those things as well. So then I started to think like when I talked to the guy and him being my mentor, you know, and, and with him just coming down on me with, with unconditional love, but, um, you know, critical critiques, I started to think like, you know, I'm doing everything that they said that, you know, this statistic that they pushing down on us, like, when am I going to fight back? And that's when I started to be strategic and say, you know what, if I want to be married, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. If I want to be a business owner, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And one of the things we'll talk about further is, um, you know, I started off as being sort of those baby father type of uh, stigma things or whatever. But I recently I had ended up getting custody of my daughter. So just changing, changing that narrative. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's what it all came from as a man. Think of that's 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 um, amazing. So getting into these books, what are some of your other favorite books? If you had to give us, you know, maybe, you know, top three, top five, something like that. What are the books that have changed your life along your journey? Your favorite books? All right, so we got right here. I'm not sure if you are familiar, but he's a brother. I see him. Uh, Leon Sullivan uh, got the uh, right on Broad Street. Got his own. Um, he, we know a lot about Leon. He's Sullivan. my. He's my second. He's my second favorite person behind Garvey as far oh, as man. Me. And he's so. Leon Sullivan is. He's is amazing. amazing, man. And he's so underrated. And, and and a lot of times, see what's the difference? And what I learned from uh, Kwame Torre was there's a difference between organizers and mobilizers. You know, uh, Sullivan, you know, what you want to be is somebody who's able to create something and you can know you can do it in Philly because I got some things off of Corey that I grabbed from him. You know, I was able to grab some things from him and use it in Hartford. So you want to be sort of that uh, resource. Like, what can we use and build a foundation where we can use in each city that we're at? You know, sometimes, you know, we'll 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 get together. We'll get together over a chicken sandwich at Popeye's. You know what I mean? But that's within the wrong reasons. Can we sort of mobilize and organize our people within the right way? And brother uh, Leon Sullivan, he left, I mean, steps that we can be using now. I was just reading it this morning. He left some steps that we can be implementing today that we're asking about what's the solutions. He left a lot of the solutions. The solutions are there. So I'll go into a couple other books. Uh, this is Survival Strategies, uh, Anthony T. Browder. The Browder Files. Mm -hmm. um, that's a that's an amazing one. If I could uh, just read just a quote, if you guys don't mind, I, I would like to read a quote. Yeah, absolutely, we love books. Listen, and Anthony T. Browder is a favorite because the Browder Files, as you mentioned, um, that's a powerful book. That's probably on uh, um, one of my top lists. I, I got I can't give a top ten, so I probably got like a top thousand. But that that book's up there. Let's put it that way. The Browder Files. But go ahead though. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, uh, if you examine the image of Africans and Af African Americans in the media, you will find that we are more often than not portrayed as savages, clowns, and criminal. You know, and this is not an accurate accurate portrait of us. And he said, uh, you know, he talks about the importance of setting time uh, aside to be able to uh, the benefits you're re receiving from setting the time aside during the day when you'll read, view, and listen to materials that you know will enhance your mental, physical, and spiritual well-being. So us, you know, sometimes we'll we'll get on social media first thing in the morning. We'll jump on social media and now somebody else is controlling our minds. No, we need to be more have a have a have a structure for what we bring into our minds. So the first thing you should be doing when you're getting up is you know uh, uh, drinking some water, you know reading, doing your exercise, you controlling your day. Not listen to the media, not listen to you know all of these things that they're trying to portray onto the news. So the next one I got is a brother uh, closing the wealth gap, uh, brother Eugene Mitchell. I mean, this is a powerful brother. He's in uh, insurance. He talks about one of the things is about how important it is for us to have life insurance. I mean, that's 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 so important. I heard a brother down in Texas, and I'm a stillist from him, but he said, you know, at these family reunions that we be having, we need to have a booth set up for a life insurance. Because we shouldn't be, we shouldn't have to be doing these GoFundMe's every time somebody passes away. So if we're having a get together, 
uh, uh, coming together for something or whatever, we need to have a booth set up for life insurance. We can't keep uh, leaving our children in a worse position um, or starting back at ground zero every single time. You know, when it comes to our culture, other cultures actually, they actually become uh, richer when somebody passes. We seem to go in debt and we got to change that. So I want to share just a quick um, quote from him. His rule number four states, and you brothers can talk about this if you want to, because I love this quote. He said, if you have a landlord and a Lexus, then you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man, that's that's so so important, man. So important. <laughs> yeah, um, life insurance is definitely important. We talk about thinking past your lifespan, and that's what that really goes down to. Um, and and to be honest with you. It's probably a deeper discussion because some of us are just selfish and yes. we need to start to think past our lifespan and understand um, that the next generation should do better than you. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Someone once told me this. and I, I got to think this through. They said, if you're not a little jealous of the next generation, then you're doing a bad job. And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, mm -hmm. you should be putting the next generation in a place that actually makes you just a little bit jealous. You know what I mean? Nice. So I. But I, I understand what they're saying, though, because you, you're putting them that you're making them have things you never had. So a lot of times just be like, he's like, oh, dang, you got some things I never thought I could have. And that and, 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 it's, and it's not jealousy in a bad way. It's like I'm envious because we did a good enough job to put you in a position that you can have things that we couldn't even right. dream of. Mm -hmm. And so that envy is a good envy. Like everybody looks at envy as a bad. Right. Thing, whereas. That's the that's the kind of envy you want to have. Like, oh, I didn't know that. Like, so like we have a lot of young people that come on to our on to our podcast, and I'm a little envious of them because at their age, I was a, I was a train wreck, <laughs> and so you know what I mean. So, and they're doing absolute masterful things, and so every time one of those young people come on here, I always tell them about how much of a train wreck I was and how way so much further they are. At the same point than than I am right now, you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. I loved it. I absolutely love that quote. Yeah, and I love that quote too, Jim. Yeah, that's 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 um amazing. I haven't read that book though. I gotta add that book to my list. I actually haven't read that book. So, um, you got any more books you want to talk about? I got one more. I thought because I'd be here all day. I mean, I got a book club because I love uh, reading so much. But the last one that I got right here is called uh, "Good to Great." You guys probably heard of it. Jim but, Collins. Uh, Jim Collins. Jim Collins, man. Great, great, great book. So I don't just read black authors, you know, shout out. I mean, I'm always supporting black authors, but we got to be diversified too as well. But, um, you know, he mentioned in this book about, you know, understanding and recognizing your weakest links because you're only as strong as your weakest link. So that quote is constantly talked about. And another one that I like because I'm such I, I'm, I'm a humble guy. And he talks about in here, charisma can be as much a liability as an asset, as the strengths of your leadership personality can deter people from bringing you the brutal facts. Now, I always tell people, and I always keep this open communication, where, look, I'm not concerned with the assembly line. So when it comes to me, that's how I look at myself. I'm going down the chopping block through the assembly line. Don't worry about the assembly. Don't worry about my feelings. Don't worry about nothing because I'm more worried about the final product. So if you're going to give me some constructive criticism, that's just me going down the assembly line. I'm worried about the final product. And a lot of times what we can do is if we're very abrasive, if we sort of have that 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 charismatic about us, that can shy people away from actually really giving them uh, giving you their honest opinion of what's going on. I see this happen through parenting. I see this happen through parenting all the time where the parent is just, you know, it's my way or the highway, you know, uh, uh, do as I say, not as I do and all that type of parenting or whatever. That's that's not good because your child going to have to get something off their chest and it's just not going to be with you. They might go to the wrong person. So I tell my children all the time, look, get whatever's off your chest respectfully, but get whatever's <laughs> off your chest or whatever. But I'm more concerned about what's going on in here, what's going on in your mind, so we can kind of navigate and try to get you to, you know, the best possible mental space that you can be in. That's my goal. 
Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things I took from the Jim Collins book is he talks about putting the right people on the bus. Yes. And and I think about that a lot of times in business uh, or even in life, because we often, um, you know, you want the best for your family and your close friends. And I've seen businesses fail because of trying to, you know, um, put your family in certain positions because mm-hmm. it's your business for my family to be here, but they're not the right people. And right. I've even seen this in terms of in, in being uh, someone who's made a living in real estate. I've, I've often seen this when people have a portfolio of properties and they just leave it to their kids with no direction mm-hmm. and they're not putting the right person on the bus. It might have been better for you to leave it in trust and have someone else like take care of it for your kids. So to me, that was one of the biggest gems from that book. And I think that's an excellent book. That's probably uh, definitely in, in, in one of my top, you know, in terms of management, it's probably one of my top five books because that idea of putting the right people on a bus is so important for small businesses, but even like, you know, large scale businesses, like, you know, mm-hmm. you got to get your feelings out of it. Sometimes you want the best for your family, but they might not be the right person for, yes. for the ultimate goal. And you could actually be and doing I, them harm. And I'm not sure if, um, if you read the richest man in Babylon, but, uh, George, Classen, rich- George Classen, that's a classic. Yeah. I read it a the million times. Man in Babylon, he, he kind of talks about that, you know, you know, leaving those riches and those fortunes, you know, to somebody who's kind of maybe not be ready for it. Your son or your daughter may not be the one that's ready to, you know, take on that. But um, but no, that's key. And as you said, in the good to great, that's one of the best things to take from the book, you know, getting the right people on the bus. But as you get the right people on the bus, it's up for the great managers to put them in the right seat. Because you can have the right people on the bus and it could be straight chaotic because you got somebody who's great with accounting, but they're actually mm-hmm. working on marketing when, yeah. you know, not a whole business fell. So now you got to get them in the right positions. And before you move, get the right people on the bus, get them in the right position, and then you actually move. And I think our pe- some of our leaders, I mean, I want to call them out specifically, but some of the leaders that we know about that's more publicly out there, I think a lot of them actually sort of, um, it's sort of like a self-sabotage with not reading these type of books. Get the right people in these positions and maybe, you know, just the school to be up already or whatever the case is. But uh, but no, but that, 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 that book is powerful. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, the analogy I'll make with that is like you see it in sports, right? where someone uh, might be playing one position and struggling and he gets traded to a different team and they may do something like switch his position or put him in a better space to succeed. And next thing you know, now you're talking about an all-star and a hall of famer when it's like, you know, um, I, for instance, I remember, I remember years ago, um, Bill Belichick, who's the coach of the Patriots, he was the coach of the Browns and it just didn't work out. His defensive coordinator was um, the guy that coaches Alabama now, uh, Nick Saban, and they both got fired. And, you know, he ends up figuring it out, going to New England, and Nick Saban's not a coach of Alabama, and he's considered the greatest. Um, but they just weren't being put in the right position to succeed with the organization they were with. I'm only bringing that up because um, that that in business, but also life, you got to put the right people in the right spots to win, right? right? And like you said, you might be a great accountant, and they got you, you know, doing something else, right? But you, you got you to gotta work the people's strengths, you know? Anyway, yeah, that's an excellent book, though, man. That's 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 a definitely um, a top book. You mentioned Richest Man in Babylon, so I got to give uh, George Classen a shout out too, because that's another great book. Um, yeah. I took Pay Yourself First from that book. That was my biggest gem from a uh, from George Classen. But man, we could talk books all day long because I I, I you know, love books just like yeah. you do. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm reading as much as you two brothers, but I do get I do get my books in. I get it. I, y'all get in probably like one a week. I get in about one a month. So yeah. y'all y'all gotcha. y'all y'all do the y'all do the y'all do the monkey business with the books. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm real. You know, not that I don't read, but you know, and then you know, I like I like to read more of the you know revolutionary stuff. Like you said, Kwame Ture. I like you know like the, the Leon Sullivan's, the Marcus Garvey's. I like the I, I like the, you know Thomas Sankara. I like to read about builders. You know what That's I mean? That's my guy right build. there. You say say I that like, name. I like, Say that name Thomas, one more time. Say that. Say that name one more time. Thomas Sankara. That's my guy, man. That's my yeah, guy. I love him. Listen, man. you know that's what I'm more. Let me ask you this question. I'm, I'm, good. No, I'm actually, what, if, if if you can, what are you current? What are you? What's your current? What are you currently reading? Uh, right now I'm reading 
uh, uh, I'm reading two things. I'm reading um, Stephen Covey, which is you know how to win friends and influence people. Because I'm I'm rereading that, and I'm reading uh, actually two rereads because I'm reading uh, Richest Man in Babylon because I, I'm, I'm so looking for. Say that again. No, I'm sorry. Dimitri, I'm asking you, what are your, what are your current oh. reads? We talked about your favorites. What are you sorry, currently reading? I, I left one out. I'm rereading Powernomics also. Gotcha. So I'm, I'm doing three rereads at the same time. I'm, but I'm, I'm really focused on Powernomics. Well, one, because, you know, we, 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 we talk about it all the time. And, I, and, you know, Dr. Claude, like you said, he leaves a blueprint in Powernomics. And so I'm doing that reread because he left the blueprint. So I'm sorry, Demetrius, what are you rereading? What are you reading or rereading? Right now I'm reading um, in our book club. We're reading Stokely Speaks. Woo! That's a rereading right now. So we kind of pick like a more of a political type of theme for, for November. Also, um, I'll be reading uh, Kwame Ture, The Black Power, The Politics of Liberation. And then um, also I'm reading The Anatomy of a Book, who I mentioned, uh, Sean P., as well, and I and I try to read different type of um, you know genres at a time because that's sort of the the beauties of reading. You know, I don't watch I don't watch too much television. I really ever watch television, but I think as Sean P talked about in the book is that each book is like a different television station. You know what I mean? You can read a book and then you're reading, you get to like page twenty, page thirty. And that, now you're like, you know, let me turn on the TV or whatever like that. You know, instead of me turning on the TV, I'll actually switch and go to another book and read a different type of book. So it's usually like a self-development book with a, uh, a black power liberation book. And then maybe something about financing or, or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm very similar. Like my, my reading is all over the place. Like I'm I, I literally <laughs> I literally just fish um. Mariah Carey's biography, and now I'm reading uh, a book called "When Money Dies" by Adam Ferguson, um, mm. which, which talks about uh, you know how, how our currency can literally be devalued to nothing, and how historically it's happened in other places, and you know a lot of times we think that it can't happen here when it can. So yeah, it's called "When Money Dies" by Adam Ferguson, man. But yeah, we could talk about books, man. But I just wanted to uh, have you put a couple on the record so we could add to our list because we have a recommended yeah. books list. Not sure, not sure if you got and that. I want to make sure I add some of those books on there. I absolutely got that one. That's actually next on it. my list. The color, I'm the, that's right here. I got it right here. Yeah, the color yeah, of money. Sure. Um, what's that? Uh, Mercer. Uh, how you pronounce your last name? Barada Ram, something like it. that. Yeah, I got that one. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So let me know. What, yeah. What so you yeah. Um. That? What what you get from that book too as well? Because I, I started reading it a little bit, and then I'll probably present that book to our, uh, my my book club, and then we'll probably read that maybe in uh, February because January we'll be reading the new Malcolm X books uh, that just came out. We'll be reading that in January. Okay, okay, that's what's up. All right, man. So listen, um, this has been this has been an excellent talk, man. Um, so. The one thing that I want our audience to leave with is uh, that it's possible to get into that space in terms of beauty supply. And if you need any help or you're interested or you know anyone interested in this space, we want to make sure that we share Demetrius's information because he's more than willing to help. And um, that's part of his mission to help more of us get in that space. We spend a lot of money there. We spend a lot of money there. So let's get more owners in that space. Um, so Demetrius, man, I just want to say thank you for your time. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your books. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for being transparent. And also thank you for willing to help because it's not that you, uh, you know, have picked yourself up and built your business um, and, you know, you're willing to help other people do the same. So I think that's very important. Definitely appreciate it. And, uh, and also, too, if I could just go through just really quickly a couple of things that uh, that I have going on, because I like to leave this stuff out there so that people can actually implement it inside of their circle or maybe in their city of things that I'm doing or things that we're doing collectively. So I Please just want to. Share. Share. OK, so uh, we talked about. Um, the beauty supply store, Madden's Beauty Supply, we talked about the book club. We also have a thing called 2020. And this was some of the things that I actually grabbed from, uh, from, from Corey. I believe Corey has some things going on about this. What 2020 is, we get 20 people together with $20 each and we pick one black business to all support at the same time. 
And what happens is, mm -hmm. is not only do we help that business for the day, but we use that as like a full out fledged market employee where we join the business owner and also the new customers together. And it just also has like a ripple effect to where people start to know about the business and the business can actually uh, scale up as well. So if anybody want to format on that, they can contact me for that as well. And that can be implemented in any city. Uh, another thing too, um, fa my fatherhood monologue. I talk about how important, you know, father, black fatherhood is. And during this monologue, um, I was able to, we actually recorded it where I talk about the trials and the tribulations of me being able to receive custody of my daughter. So I want fathers, black fathers to never stop trying to be in their children's lives. If you got to go to court to get visitation and start off that way, go to court, get visitation, do whatever you got to do, but never stop being in uh, your children's lives. Uh, another thing too that we're starting, we got, we got uh, Ujima, our Saturday school where me and a black author, we're going to be starting where we're going to start to teach children about uh, actual history, African history. We'll teach them about uh, reading, writing, uh, math, and giving them uh, tutoring help with inside of um, you know their curriculum that they're working on right now. Also too, I'm a part, I'm a vice president of an investment group. So what we do in this investment group is we have a group, eight group of guys who we got together where we set a reoccurring amount that we give to our bank account. We set up an mm -hmm. LLC where we created this group investment account. We come together, we learn about finances, learn about stocks, and we go ahead and we pick as a group what stocks and things that we want to buy. And this investment group can be used to buy real estate, invest into stocks and, you know, do all type of things. So that's just a couple of couple of things. I got more, but I'll be here all day. But thank you. Oh, no, listen, listen, you're putting the work in, man. And that's why we wanted to highlight you because you got a lot of stuff going on and um, it's very important stuff. Um, but but it's all powerful because what you're doing is you're helping build the community. So I'm um, shout out to you. Um, and that's one of the things that Corey and I were doing here in Philly with um the whole 2020 thing. That's that's uh something that we were doing. Um, and that can be applied to online business as well. Um, yes. just want to put that out there to help support Black businesses. Um, and we also, I mean, Corey and I, are also part of a, a Black investment group, and we actually right. just um we just actually finished something that you know um no one else that we've talked to has done. We are buying a full node in the cryptocurrency space. So we got together and there's about 20 of us put bread together to not just buy the crypto, but buy the entire node. So in essence, becoming our own bank, but nice. um, in the crypto space. So there's a lot of good things going on, man. And I just want to share, you know, uh, all this, all this amazing stuff that you're doing um, because it's important for our community, man. And for the folks out there listening or watching, I'll make sure to put all of Demetrius's contact information within the description so you can uh, follow him and see what he's got going on. Um, hit him up if you have any questions. And like he said, he's, he's more than willing to help. So use him as a resource. So a lot of times we have folks that are, are more than willing uh, to be resources, but we have to ask questions and actually go out and seek the knowledge, right? And it's not just Demetrius. I'm going to put this out there for all of our guests because most of our guests have said, listen, you know, I got the information, but no one asked. So make sure you reach out to him. You know, seriously, make sure you reach out yeah. to him because we do we do have brothers and sisters who are willing to help build, but we have to reach out to him. So I want to leave you guys yeah. with that, man. And Demetrius want to say before, thank you, man. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. You got something to say? No, and before we leave, I got to shout out, you know, a brother who actually like inadvertently kind of made this happen as well. Shout out to Carl Tone Jones. You know, that's the guy who actually kind of linked me with Corey. If it wasn't for Carlton Jones putting out what, yeah, yeah, professor. Professor, man, shout out to him because if he wanted to put that out there, he actually connected me with kind of like what Corey was doing. Because I went and I said, you know, the 2020, you know, that's something that, you know, you know, I kind of got from uh, Carlton Jones and Carlton was like, nah, that's Corey, bro. Like, you know, I'm, I'm with him, <laughs> but you know, that came from Corey's camp and stuff like that. And he introduced me to Corey. So shout out to that brother who's always uh, uh, banging, always giving us great information and putting into work. And, and I just want to acknowledge him because I appreciate him. Absolutely. Oh, Clark's that's our brother, too. Yeah, he's man. a good brother, man. He actually um, uh, he's a professor um, and shout out to him. He had us actually come speak to his class and he, he definitely put works in in the community. He's actually been on our podcast, too. So um, you guys. 
want to check him out. He was in an earlier episode talking about, you know, um, his his uh documentary because he's a docu documentary. So he has a whole documentary. What's it called? A uh, Independence Project, right? Yeah, in the, the Independence Day Project. Independence Day Project. So make sure you check that out. Um, blackindependence dot uh, I believe is his website. But um, yeah, he definitely puts work in in the community. Um, salute the brother Carl Tone Jones, man. Um, that's the brother. So, um, Demetrius, I want to say thank you again for our audience. Make sure you share this episode. Make sure you uh, stay in tune with everything we got going on. Check out what Demetrius has going on. And as we always say, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you keep. Game elevates, and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Definitely. Peace.